This is my good friend and colleague, Paul Kirschbaum. That guy right there. I'm Leslie Wooten. It's 1033. Let's get into it. <laughs> Today's topic, train the trainer. Yes or no, Paul? Training is easy. Yes! I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was, like, was going to mess with you. Oh, I was going to mess with you. <laughs> wow. Uh, so no. My, most of my it's career up. training and development. And they're like, oh, training's easy. I'm like, that's the mentality that keeps me from yeah. optimizing my job. Like, what do you mean it's easy? Yeah. So no. Uh, no. I mean, some people are better than others, but no, sure. it's not easy. Sure. I'd, I'd argue right now, I'm pretty great at it. 10 years ago, I was not. And I went to school to be a math teacher. That did not teach me how to teach. It taught me content and how to deliver content, but it didn't get into, it, it taught me about the, actually a Texas educational system, but it didn't teach me about how people learn. And mm. I really was starting off on the wrong foot as an educator, not knowing how people learned, I just thought, okay, well, all this content, basically I'll read it to them. Like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Not easy. Not easy. No. I mean, I'm getting better at it every day. I mean, I'm in my position, I, I do a lot of trainings and mm -hmm. first first go at it, I wasn't good, you know, yeah. and, and that's okay. I mean, I also, I also, my education was in a culinary to be a chef. So I just learned how to throw stuff at people. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so you know, it, throw it, meat against the wall so you can figure out if it's you know marbleized or not. <laughs> I've broken my few share of uh, ladles tossed against the wall. I once threw a pan uh, of brownies. Oh, almost. Why would you throw that and just eat it? I don't know. Just all right. So <laughs> last episode, hopefully everybody caught that. We discussed the cost of training. Um, now we did mention the labor needed for a trainer during a new employee's training and that that should be considered to calculate the cost of training. And that was a challenge to come up with what the cost of training is. We got there, but we didn't dive into what the trainer's cost was and what it takes to have a trainer. So is there training cost to be considered for your trainers? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they still have to go through training. So it's just, I think it's a higher cost, if anything. Um, it's a higher level cost. Higher level uh, cost. Okay. I, yeah, because yeah, I, 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 having, having done this for quite a while, done many train the trainers, advised a lot on who, how to select trainers. I, I don't feel like it's going to cost more to train your trainers than your new employees, but it's a higher level cost. And it's a deeper dive into what they need to know. Um, why not just pick somebody on the floor who's good at their job or the person who, who talks the most? Why not just pick one of them? Because it's, it's just the same as just because you're a good salesman doesn't make you a good manager. You know, you know, just because you're a great server doesn't make you a good manager just because you're a great bartender doesn't make you a great bar manager. Uh, mm -hmm. Just because you're a great manager doesn't make you a great trainer. It, it's just, you know, it, it is a set, it's a set of skills that is, you know, some people are better at than others. Mm -hmm. It can that be trained? Absolutely. Just might take longer or less. Yeah. Some people are naturals mm -hmm. at it, but um, it is a unique skill set, just like being a chef, just like being a manager, just like being a bartender, just like being a, one of the best servers. Um, it, 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 but just because you're good at one thing doesn't make you good at being a trainer. Right. Just because you're a good football player doesn't make you a good coach. No, oh, look at Peyton Manning. I mean, he would probably, because you can't, they can't explain why they're good at something at times. You know what I mean? Yeah. They can't explain their work ethic. They can't explain that the way, the way their mind works. Just, just not have that. a work ethic. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. Not, that's, yeah. I don't know what you do. Yeah. The, my, my one, and you probably gave me a hard time on this one. I always say this about a lot of, a uh, lot of employees on both end sides of it, just um, from corporate all the way down to, you know, operations and to server, you know, I'm like sense of urgency. That's my, well, that doesn't mean anything. I know, but that, that would drive you nuts. But, but to me, it does like in my head, cause I have a major sense of urgency. You've worked with right. me. My brain sometimes will can't get off task. Cause I'm just, I got to get it done. It has to be mm -hmm. done and it has to be done right. And so my sense of urgency is much different. I have a tangible, you know, I have a clock almost. I have a tangible mm -hmm. amount that I know what I can get done in a certain amount of time. And if I don't get it done that time, it drives me batty. Like right now. 
Right. And, and, and the point of this conversation, which you're getting at, let me explain it. Let me, let me train it is you can't just go to a new employee and say, you need to have a sense of urgency Yes. because it's such a generic term that they're going to go, Oh, I do. I'm like, no, no, no. You were five minutes late. Yeah. I almost was 10 minutes late. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> no, right. no. So how That's do you, how do you, argue, how do you argue that they don't have it when all they have to do is go, yeah, I do. So you as the trainer have to know how to describe what you mean yeah. by that. And you can't say it's a feeling. You've got to define it. And yeah. as much as I, I get around people that say, well, you can't define something like that. It's just intangible. Like you can't teach people that. I'm like, oh, you can teach people all those things. I could teach you how to have a sense of urgency. If from a leadership standpoint, we define what you mean by that. Is it putting in orders? Is it reviewing something once and then sending it out? Is it greeting a table within 60 seconds? Is it 30 seconds? Is it immediate? Uh, you define what the sense of urgency is and what it looks like. Is it yeah. you know, making sure that you're uh, not putting your uniform on when you walk in the door, that you're already in your uniform when you walk in the door? That might be a sense of urgency right there. So little things right there that you can't just say, Oh, you should have experience. Like, what are you talking about? Um, yeah. Goodness, you found you found one of my tangents right there. I know. I like you it. Know, yeah. Don't tell me you've got a sense of urgency, but not being able to say what it is. Uh, you're right. You and I have worked together for so long. I, I, I understand your sense of urgency. Yeah. But if somebody can't explain that to me or a new employee, then they're going to interpret that however they want to, and then they they can have the argument all day long that they have it. You just don't understand their perspective. So yeah. the, the point here is who you choose to train new employees could directly affect the cost of training because it's going to directly affect the results of training. Who you appoint as your trainer matters to your ultimate ROI for the cost of training, which we reviewed last time. Um, so who your trainer is could also affect the time it takes to get a new employee ready for their official day one. Mm -hmm. And in any training curriculum I've ever worked through, created, built, revised, you always put flexibility in there if somebody knows or doesn't know, can show and demonstrate or struggles so that you add and buffer more time or that you speed it up if they've got it going. I see nothing wrong with having a four day training curriculum shortened to two if they're sharp and they're getting it and they enjoy it, great. And I see nothing wrong with having a four day curriculum extended to five or six days if they've almost got it. But the key yeah. is having the right trainer who knows how to uh, observe and show and demonstrate those things that you need there. Yeah. Some, you know, I, I agree. Uh, I've had some great trainers, mm -hmm. you know, and I've had none before. Just do it on your own. <laughs> yeah. Good I luck. Mean, yeah. And then that happens more times than not you know it yep yep sink or swim and then inevitably you're you're there two weeks and you've got that one junior manager who thinks they know everything and they don't know anything about training and they go to the new person like how do you not know this like because you never taught me and they're doing something wrong or they're creating new habits or they're yeah. greeting people not the way that you want them to they're not upselling because you never told them that they needed to you're just like well everybody should know that like you could have no. spent ten minutes verifying that. I mean, the, I mean, it's it's like in, in the in the in the culinary world. I mean, you you don't know everything. You don't know every item. You don't know every cooking method. You know, mm -hmm. it, you just don't know it all. And you and so you walk into a kitchen, and you can't expect them. You, you, the basics, maybe, but sure. not outside that small basic box. And I mean basics. Well, I still, I still think, hands down, you should verify that they know those basics. Absolutely, absolutely. But that's the thing. That's, I, I think that's almost pre-training. I mean, mm -hmm. that's almost like during the hiring process. I think we can talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, but, verify, you know, inspect what you expect. Ab absolutely, and then have your expectations. You know, you know, have. You know, we always talk about that benchmark. You know, have it where they need to meet meet at least these requirements. Right. You know, and then, you know, have it attainable. Most things attainable can be attainable, right? In general, unless you're in management, and you're going for a certain kind of, you know, skill set. But, I mean, I think you're right. We got to, you have to kind of, 
I don't know. I lost my train of thought. That's fine. All right. So uh, let's, let's go this because I'm, I'm right with you. What should a trainer be taught in addition to their regular job? Wow. Um, we're talking about train the trainer. You, yeah, I think, I mean, it comes down to communication. Just, you know, okay. you might know skills. that you might know the, you might know the curriculum, but mm -hmm. just different knowing it and then trying to show somebody how to use that. Sure. So can you teach someone how to teach? Yeah. Oh, hands down. Yes, absolutely. And here's where I know we'll disagree. Go for it. I can teach anyone how to teach. Yeah, I disagree with that one. <laughs> I knew it. 100% I can teach people how to teach. You're cocky. Well, I'd also say 100% I could teach people how to tie their shoes, whether they're good at it or not. I could 100% I could teach people knife skills. Good they at it or their, not is different. They might cut their finger off. <laughs> I didn't say without injury. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can yeah. teach anybody how to teach. And then yeah. I would verify that they're good at it. And those that are good at it might surprise you, but that's who your trainer should be. Yeah. Because how to teach is the concept of how people learn and techniques to motivate people, listening, like you said, communication, facilitation techniques, how to yeah. pronounce things and how to effectively communicate one stream of thought and staying on topic, um, preparation, giving them the tools and the resources. It's it's impossible to teach one person everything, even your trainers, but you can provide your trainers with the tools and resources that they need to find any answer, any solution. Easiest thing, if you're going to have a trainer, easiest thing for train the trainer it is introduce that trainer to the members of your leadership team who are your decision makers. If you've got a marketing person, maybe a marketing team, facilities employee, maintenance, bar manager, whoever, your trainer should know them and they should know your trainer and your trainer should know what their AOR is, what their area of responsibility is for every single decision maker on your team. Why? So that when they're asked a question or they come across something that they know, all I have to know is what all these AORs are, my marketing, my facilities, my yeah. culinary front of house. I just need to know who's in charge of that. So then in the moment that I need that answer, I say, oh, will you go talk to Paul about that? Now I've answered your question. I didn't know what the answer was, but I taught you how to find those resources because the trainer, if you're going to do nothing else with the trainer, Teach them where to find the answers. Yeah, facilitate. They're a facilitator. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong yeah. with that. I mean, mm -hmm. I, there's great there's great value in facilitating. Mm -hmm. I mean, as a consultant, you know, I don't consider myself a consultant at times. I'm a facilitator. No, I don't know everything. Mediator. I sure know who I, know, I sure know who to ask. <laughs> Absolutely. When I, have a, when I have a training issue, who do I call? This guy. This guy. <laughs> True. It's that simple. When, when, when he has a culinary question, problem. Or, yeah. This guy. Or hard yeah. skill and numbers. <laughs> really? I, I don't call you for math questions. No, nor spelling. <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> but both of us will send each other pictures of menus to review. That we, we, the bottom line here is we know where to go for resources. Yes. Um, when I'm looking over a PNL, I'm looking at EBITDA or EBITDA. I know which of my colleagues that I'm going to call and discuss so that I can get in-depth answers to what I'm looking for. And I, I feel very confident in being able to read a PNL and go through and, and figure out what an ROI is and where you're maybe losing money or where you could uh, help out your entire uh, operations. But I also know that there's some people that I've worked with that are so good at that that you know what? That's a weight off my shoulders. I'm going to go to them if I need that answer. Yeah. 100%. And, uh, th th my point here is that's what your trainers need to have within your establishment. They need to be able to walk with the new employee, discuss with them, go over rules, regulations, all those things, and make sure that they're learning where to go if they have questions. Because if you don't do that, and a new employee has a question, but they're on their own, guess where they get the answer from? <laughs> Themselves. The, <wrong> source. <laughs> the server else. next to them on a Tuesday yeah. afternoon. Yeah. Google. 
Google, yeah. Um, so how long do you think it'll take for a trainer to meet and review with leadership and learn the AORs of your decision makers? How long do you think that process would take? I mean, it's, it's continuing education most of the time, okay. but the, the basics that don't take long. Like, no. I'm in charge of, the, the, I live in buckets. You know, you know I live in threes, but these are like, what are your three things that you're responsible for? I mean, that, that's kind of, you start there. Now, right. is there a lot more? Of course there are. There could be a hundred things underneath those buckets. But if you know, hey, listen, if it comes with, you know, operations or, um, you know, this, if it has to do anything with banking, you go to this person, you know, mm -hmm. this is, you know, if it has anything to do with getting menus printed or, you know, running out of this or we need this or facilities, you know, you just, you, the top three are kind of mm -hmm. like, and then you can kind of work, people can kind of figure it out as long as the, the big buckets are there, right? They at least know where to go. And, and I'm with you. I, I don't think that takes long at all. You know, it might take... Yeah. Um, two hours because you actually want them to have a conversation with people or it might take one hour today and an hour another day if people don't work yeah. at the same time. You don't have to call a meeting, although that'd be the easiest, quickest way to do it. You don't have don't to call Don't send in a, a memo. Don't know. No, let them meet face to face. Yes. I know. Say, don't send a memo. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry to interrupt, but it's true. It's not it's no, so it's hard true. to say, hey, my responsibility is this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. And I always put this at the end. I do not do this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think it's so important to establish what your job is. And yeah. the, there was like a bad word before I worked as oh, that's not my job. And like, you weren't allowed to say that because everything's everybody's job. Guess what yeah. happened when something needed to be done? That's your job too. That's not just my, no, that's your job too. And there was no accountability. Personal like at some point, you've got to define whose job is what and yeah. what's not your job because you know what if i know paul that it's not your job to take the trash out but i see you taking the trash out that tells me you're going above and beyond yeah and so also you're not allowed to but I and know if you also know what not to do like you said i, I don't do this mm -hmm. i can either a push you in the, in the way you know push you in the right direction yeah uh, but again, I think that's another one. It's it's just what are your job titles and descriptions? And a lot of places don't have them. Um, mm -hmm. They do in the upper management, middle management, upper management. They have mm -hmm. them, but sometimes on the on the the lower of the organization, they don't. Which to me is is a big miss because that's where the most important is where the customer facing is, right? Mm -hmm. in, in general, so I think job title is is huge. I mean, how many mm -hmm. arguments have we got I've gotten in with about who takes out the trash? It's like no, it, it, that's your job. Like it's right. It, like right there. Yep. You know what I mean? You've got to have it. Now at the end of the day, I don't care who takes out the trash. I don't. No, I, I don't. But if it's not taken out at the end of the day, I know who was supposed to have done it. Personal accountability. Mm -hmm. It's one of the things in the industry that we miss out on big time. Um, and that's across the board. That's not, that's from bottom all the way to the top. Uh, and you know, I, and people, I think, I, I hate when people say it's not my job. Well, technically it's not your job, but it still needs to be done. I'm not saying I, cover for somebody else and do yeah. somebody else's job. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that sometimes you just got to get it done, period. I, I like when somebody recognizes that it's not their job. I don't like when they don't do it because it's not their job. Yeah, unless you're union. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I, I've, I've done, I, like, you know, I, I'm in a lot of events. And people won't move a trash can. It's not my job. I've, I mean, it's not your job to move a trash can. Nope. I've, I've worked with a um, uh, housekeeping SOP. And it was talking about the housekeepers coming into a hotel room, vacuuming and straightening and doing everything. And at one point I was asked, what do they do if there's a lamp or a cord in the way? Like, we need to write that in there. I'm like, they move it. They're like, they're not allowed to move it. It's electrical. They've got to call an electrician. I'm like, to move a lamp, like absolutely. I'm like, this is gonna be the longest training I've ever written in my life if I can't tell housekeeping to move electrical because, and I don't mean out of the walls, I mean unplug it, move it, vacuum, move it, plug it back in. They had to call an electrician to move a lamp if they needed a vacuum underneath it. Yeah. So that sucks. <laughs> that's to me, a like example, that's a whole that's show. Not my and job. That, but, you know what? That's the name of our next episode. That's not my job. 
<laughs> I'm down. I'm down. And for the sake of this conversation about train the trainer, your trainers have to know whose job is what and therefore whose job is not what so that they can find the answers. And if you got it so nitty gritty that you know who's moving the lamps or who's allowed to touch a knife or who's not allowed to touch a knife, that's the info that your trainers have to have. And the more of that you have, the longer it's going to take to train them. And that's fine because those are the answers that you have to have because those are your rules, regulations, SOPs. Your trainer doesn't have to memorize all of them, but has to have access to every single one of them so that they can answer the questions and guide your new employees to the answers and the tools and the resources that they need to do their job. 100% agree. That's one of, it's the most important role in most oper, most organizations. If you want, if you want your new employees uh, off on the the right foot, understanding what's expected of them, what they're accounted uh, accountable for, mm-hmm. your trainers have to know the roles and responsibilities of everybody, every decision maker in your establishment, in order to become a trainer. And that's something and, that you just got to verify. And I, I think that's where you start. That is the base of what a trainer has to be able to do. And, and know how to measure it and the measurables behind it. Mm-hmm. Now they don't know, like you said, they don't need to memorize them, but they need to know no. where to find them. So does that mean they need to have a manual? Do the, do the trainers need a manual? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, what's your version of a manual? If it's the, is it like having a, a learning management system at their fingertips? Yeah, Ooh. they need something like that. Ooh, you want to go big? <laughs> we, I mean, we can create some e-learning. So, we can create some uh, instructor-led look, training. We, yeah. We, look what look what we're in right now. I mean, like mm-hmm. during the age of COVID, isn't that the next wave of everything? Everybody I've talked to in tech. Everybody I've talked to in securities. Um, I, I I joined like a virtual. We just chat about stuff that are not industry. They're not culinary. They're not culinary. They're not management. They're not consultants on my on the on the food and hospitality aspect of it. But all they, everybody's talking about is how do we get this in a training material online? I mean, look how failed as a country we did on e- e-learning or online. Or, or, we, we, we failed miserably on this. It's one of um, the easiest things ever to set up and track and regulate. And oh my goodness, I, I, I'll be completely honest. In, in uh, the, the age of COVID, everybody going online, I'm like, oh, I can do all that. I like I'll be valuable moving forward because I can create e-learning. I can create uh, online learning. I can create an LMS and set that up. Like yeah. le- that's my wheelhouse. Let's go. I love yeah. that stuff. And I've spent so long, you know, uh, not arguing, but for the sake of this quick conversation, arguing with leadership over, we need this. They're like, Oh, it costs a lot of money. I'm like, no, we need this because of the ROI in the future. Yeah. And you've got low cost LMSs. Then you got some big expensive big boys and yeah. you know you've got stuff in the middle and it depends on what you want to do but we can track it we can send it out and it's good for communication it, it puts all the tools and resources there but you I'll know give an what? example i'll give yeah. you an example i'm gonna interrupt here because i i have a firsthand um great knowledge on this so you know in pre-covid i'd go into a restaurant i would sit down with an owner or, or an operator and and walk them through let's say an SEO report, you know, search into mm-hmm. optimizer and we'll look at their, their, their website or look at online ordering and I'll physically sit there with them and poke them through the internet and their webs and show them mm-hmm. the ins and outs, show them some good examples, some bad examples. What are you looking for? That kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, during COVID, you know, some, some operators don't want me in the building. Which I'm sure totally respect. So what I, what I've done is I've recorded myself on my laptop using technology Mm-hmm. going doing the exact same thing and i just send it to the operator and it's in a video and they sit there going they hear me talk they see me click through it's the exact same thing they can do it on their own time and it it works for them now mm-hmm. is it as impactful i don't know yet i'll let you know but i think it's working mm-hmm. i've had it i had i've had any you know complaints about it so if if that's happening on my end which you know that's real time it's going to get bigger and bigger because then eventually some operators are going to expect it because then they can do it on their own time. They don't have to schedule an appointment that I got to go drive. That my company pays for my gas. My company pays for my 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 car. My company pays for my time. You know how much time? You know how much time I spend behind my wheel? It's a lot. A lot All of that money. could be invested in something done over the interwebs. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, my, that's my soapbox. 
it, it, I think we're, we're in that day and age that technology is there at our fingertips that we can put that there and have metrics to show learning, to show not just test results, but uh, interaction, um, motivation. You can see on how fast somebody goes through something, how many misclicks they had. Did they, did yeah. they misclick, get an answer wrong and immediately get it right? Or did they yeah. go through the test and then come back to that question and struggle with it again? And it yeah. tells you, okay, you know what? They had it, or this is something that we need to spend more time on during training. There's so many details that you can get. Oh yeah. Through it. There, there's when you say, um, can we tell you said, um, I've it, probably it, said it a thousand times. Yeah. No, but that's, they, they track all, they could track all that stuff. So, I mean, the technology has gone through the roof in the last five years, if not long, you know, last 10 years, whatever. Um, I just said, um, of course, yeah. But and it's, I, I, it's, it's so much better than having a manual a yeah. stack of SOPs and you have one sheet at the end that says, I have read and will comply with all this. What did that just do? Hey, it gave you, it covered your butt. No, it did not. Again, no, I mean, like, if, if it's like a, if it's, if it's like legal stuff. Sure, but I guarantee you in that document somewhere it says wear cut gloves so you don't cut your finger and then they cut their finger. No employer goes, well, sorry, you signed a release waiver. We're not doing anything about that cut finger. No, but they think, yeah, well, there's other, but you si there's you other si reasons you they the sign that. There's other reasons they, they, they can do that stuff. I know, but I'm just saying that this one catch-all of I signed this does not confirm that the employee knows Everything. Yes. No, you're hundred percent right. I'm just saying that that's the way, way of, of the past. I mean, I mean, it still happens, but right. You know, a lot of these modular trainings, um, especially not just the hiring process, you know, but the training process is going online and, and they're getting better and better at it. Heck there's even a, there's a national hotel chain that does it for culinary, like legit mm -hmm. culinary. So they, they, they video themselves cutting stuff and they, they submit it. I mean, there's, it's a, it's a big deal. It, it's moving, it's moving fast. They're, they're trying to meet where they're, where the people they're trying to hire are at. They're not hiring mm -hmm. me's and I mean, some companies are, but they're not hiring, you know, a lot of places are hiring younger and younger. Well, they're technology, they're, they're technology based. I mean, if you throw an application and it's not mobile friendly, right. You're missing the boat. If you have a, a, a sign in your window that says help wanted, you're missing the boat. Yep. Yep. If you're, if you're on your kiosk, it says taco specials hiring. I didn't know they were hiring, but Hey, I mean, you're missing the Poe. It's, it's, you gotta I, use I, it. I think I can summarize this entire thing that we're talking about, about online and, and e-learning and everything is you've got to find a way to inspect what you expect. You've got to find a way to verify what's happening. You, you have to have your trainer teach to you what they'll be teaching to others and demonstrate that they know how to do it. Cause it doesn't matter if you've seen your trainer bartend. It doesn't matter if you've seen your trainer portion, uh, portion food. It doesn't matter if you've seen your trainer prep. It doesn't matter if you've seen your trainer clean the restrooms. You have got to have them show you how they'll teach that and verify that they're going to do it right. Yep. Um, Good call out. Mm -hmm. So you, you don't just want to randomly assign a trainer to a new employee. You'll be putting a burden on that trainer. You'll be setting very low expectations for a new employee. If you're just, uh, follow Paul around for a little bit, they're going to be like, oh, okay, this manager doesn't care what I do. And you're going to be setting those expectations. We can talk about the ROI or lack of ROI that you're going to get from that. And you'll not be setting your business up for success. Quick question, Paul. Should your trainers be paid more for training? But paid more for training than just I thought that's what they while they're train. training. While they're training, no. do they get paid more? No, paid the same all the time. Flat fee, salary, set, done. <laughs> same. Yeah. So, uh, so I mean, a bartender, they, hey, you're training today. You get paid the same. Oh no, okay. I thought talking like uh, that's all they do is train. Oh, I don't think anybody should only train. Oh my no. goodness. I've, well, I've I mean, worked I'm in places that, where they have full-time trainers. I'm like, I should be the only full-time trainer that you have on your side. Well, I'm talking like corporate. So maybe I misunderstood. But if you're talking yeah. about in the restaurant, trainers yeah. get paid more? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like not even the go. Yes, they get paid more. I thought you meant like more of a, hey, you train. You're the trainer who trains everybody in the, in the opera. You know, every single person that comes to the door, you're training. 
that's your job that you're a trainer that's what you get paid for but if you're talking about like servers that are trainers or bartenders that are trainers or management trainers then yes they should get paid more for their training time I'd, I'd argue um one yes but through servers and bartenders that paid more might come in the um form of better shifts more shifts more hours more opportunity to make money on the floor yeah i mean i mean at least give them free meal <laughs> I, I we're in the restaurant industry how does how is a free meal not part of something that's going because i know your actual food cost or what it should be like yeah that that should be the easiest reward you have right there yeah reward them celebrate the fact that they're setting your business up for success so let's let's go with this for a final question on that note should you first look to your trainers when you're looking to promote from within hmm i don't know i don't know i mean i think it just depends um, I, it's, it's that double edged sword. Like if you're really good at something, do you really want to pull them away from that? Oh, I, I think so. But I think you should consider trainer, lead bartender, uh, team lead, key associate, whatever it might be. I think you should include all that for what the next level is as oh, yeah. part of the, the step, uh, especially over a new employee or somebody who's just a bartender or just a server or just a cook for the time being. Them. And I, hmm? What fits them? I mean, like, like you said, like we talked about at the beginning, a, a great salesperson doesn't make a great manager. If you're promoting, you know, a you want to promote from within, but you got to pick what fits that position best. It might be a salesperson. I mean, it might be your trainer. It might not be. It just depends, you know. A whole lot but to consider. Usually, but usually, usually, trainers make great. Usually, and you're going to probably disagree with me on this one, but usually, I trainers make. GMs. Oh, I think so. I think Cause, so. Cause who because who better had, to sit around and say what's supposed to be happening rather than doing it yourself? And know where to go. And that's, <laughs> that's back to it. <laughs> that's funny. I got that. But it's true, though. Like, if you know where to go as a GM, it's part of it. I mean, I don't know. I, I think if you're training, um, it, it just depends what kind of operation you have. But I, I usually, trainers usually to me are, are a little, uh, a little more flexible, a little more understanding, a little more patient, um, and a little bit more um, well-rounded. And I think that usually makes a better GM or makes a better a person to promote. I think at the end of the day, it just means that you've got to spend some time making sure that whoever's training your new associates is trained themselves. And it goes beyond just the role that they're doing or training, but the understanding that they've got to bring for the new employees. Um, I cannot tell you how detrimental it is when you don't spend time training your trainers. And I could speak for hours on the benefits of having great training in house. Uh, this is true, guys. No, no, that's, yeah. <laughs> I can speak for that. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, I mean, not only would your team be better informed, but they'll be more motivated by your initiative and leadership. I don't know. It all falls into leadership to me. Um, yeah, I know. You watching at home, tell us your successes, possibly even lessons you've learned along the way. Make sure you watch the entire series we have about bringing in, hiring talent, training talent, retaining talent, motivating talent. We talk about the cost of training and here we're talking about the importance of training your trainers and how to do it. Uh, leave us a comment. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, show us some love. And we'll keep coming back with more strategies and insights to help you improve your operations. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys.